I'm a comedian. I also want to become a dentist and open my own office off the freeway. I'm going to call it Bridgework on 75. Good joke. All right. All right. I travel around doing lots of comedy and I'll travel to other states. I flew out east recently to do a comedy festival in Boston and the flight back was really turbulent and scary. I thought we were going to crash, but we landed safely at Metro Airport and I think I'm the only person who's ever said this out loud. Thank God. I'm in Detroit. Where's my car? I, uh, when I, I'll travel to other states and people will ask me, so Matt, what's it like living in Michigan? I'm like, I don't know what to say. I'm like, well, it's just like here, except without all the paved roads and jobs. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, you ever use the phrase, yeah, just follow the orange barrels till you get to the abandoned factory? Yeah. Have you ever seen someone pay for a Fago with a bridge card? That's Michigan. We don't have a state seal, we have a food stamp. Uh, there's a picture of a guy from Mexico with his arm around a robot. They're giving an auto worker the finger. Pure Michigan. <laughs> There are worse places, though. I just worked in the state of Indiana. Have you ever been there? Yeah. It's not. It's not much. It's the trailer park with six million people. Have you ever been to Indiana? Indiana's state slogan: Indiana, crossroads of America. Why don't they just say it? Indiana, keep driving. <laughs> I did a show in a small town in Indiana. This woman came up to me after the show. She was very nice, but she said a weird thing to me after the show. She said, you were really funny. I want you to perform at my engagement party. I'm like, sure, that'd be great. I, I'm very happy to do that. And But she said a weird thing. She said, yeah, I want a comedian, and I either want you or Larry the Cable Guy. I'm like, okay, well, I appreciate being in the company of such a huge star, but he flies to gigs in a private jet. I drive a 95 Escort. Uh, he has a $1.5 million per appearance fee. For me to make that kind of money, I have to do 1.5 million shows. <laughs> Give or take, right? She said, no, I have a personal injury settlement coming in, and he's what I'm going to spend it on. And I got quiet because in my head I'm trying to think if I've ever heard a more white trash sentence in my entire fucking life. There was such a content. Whoa, you did? What was the, what was the sentence? I don't know. It wasn't, I don't know, I lost my mullet in that meth lab fire. I think that would win the past blue ribbon. I don't hate on people though, but I mean people like that can kind of lower the bar for everyone else. I mean they're the reason that there are still stores that think they have to have a sign that says no shoes, no shirt, no service. Here's my question about that sign. If there's a guy walking in the front door wearing nothing but his mullet, his methamphetamine sores, and you know his confederate flag tattoos, what the hell makes you think he's a huge reader? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I mean, just put up a picture of, like, Kid Rock with a circle slash around it. Drive the point home. All right, we got a lot of Kid Rock fans. Okay. <laughs> I follow you. But, you know, we got good things going on in, in Michigan, too, in the Detroit. In Detroit area, too, because a lot of cities, big cities, will brag about how hip they are. Like, in Los Angeles, we had medical marijuana before everyone else. Seattle, we had Starbucks. We had grunge before everyone else. Well, we're from Detroit, where we have the apocalypse before everyone else. <laughs> came here first. But uh, also, you know, we came here first. Wow, uh, that's ominous. <laughs> wow, I feel like the road warrior of comedy all of a sudden. Got here with a tank of gas and a fucking leather jacket and with shoulder pads on it for some reason or something. But, uh, you know, I mean, we got the good things going on in Michigan too. Are you guys Red Wings fans? Cool. When they when they won, you know, they they came up a little bit short, you know, again last season. But in a town with the Lions, fuck it, we'll take it, right? You know. Yeah. Were you guys like me that when they won the Stanley Cup a few years ago, did people in your neighborhood set off fireworks to celebrate? Burn the town down. Burn the town down. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so I, I haven't been here that long. I just uh, I don't know. But uh, I don't know where to go with that. All right. Well, yeah, the town looks like it was set on fire, right? What do you want to say? You know? 
But yeah, people, I asked that question in Ann Arbor, Michigan. You ever been there? Very liberal, oh, yeah. massive town. Everyone's like, well, were they fair trade organic fireworks? <laughs> we got from a health food store. <laughs> I did a show in Ann Arbor, and after the show, another comic from out of town comes up to me, and he says, hey, is there a titty bar in this neighborhood? Like, yeah, it's right between that feminist bookstore and the vegan coffee shop. <laughs> Can't imagine an Ann Arbor strip club with feminist strippers who don't take their clothes off, they just shave. <laughs> Guys are throwing razors on stage. It's a lady shit, baby, take it all off. <laughs> Sorry if you're still eating. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, people in my neighborhood set off fireworks to celebrate the Wings winning, and normally that's a lot of fun, but I happen to make my home in the city of Dearborn. Are you guys familiar with Dearborn at all? Yeah! What do you know about it? I mean, Dearborn! Yeah. 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 yeah, so I'm gonna have to apologize. Maybe I'm the asshole here, but stuff starts blowing up outside my window. I get a little nervous, yeah. Just so long as I don't hear a... I heard sirens, what's going on? You scored a goal, you pussy, get up. Yeah, I like Dearborn. It's a little bit weird with some of the things going on in the world. Like one time, a couple years ago, I saw a list in the newspaper of the FBI's most wanted with pictures. And it looked like a page from my yearbook in high school. Section A through AA. Vowel joke, smart audience. I'm glad you laughed at that joke. They didn't like it in Dearborn. <laughs> that's the thing about when you do comedy, is that some nights are a lot of fun because you have a room full of people laughing, you feel great. Other nights are weird because you just have a crowd of strangers quietly staring at you, they don't get you, they have a weird look on their face like they're confused and disgusted at the same time. It's not their fault, but you feel awkward. You feel like you're like, a pallbearer with a boner. Just... <laughs> hey honey, it looks like somebody's in the will, huh? <laughs> you guys, you guys also make me feel better because I was having a bad day earlier. Is it a bad sign when you wake up in the morning contemplating suicide and your horoscope tells you your new idea is solid? <laughs> I would never kill myself, because you can do it in video games. Have you ever done that on purpose? Or in a Spider-Man video game and just jumped off the top of buildings over and over again? That's why I don't play that game Duck Hunt, because you can't turn the gun on yourself. And I wish you could just to see the look on that dog's face, right? <laughs> I don't know. So you guys, yeah, you guys are good. So, I mean, did you, did you guys? I had a bad, kind of shitty Christmas this year too. Did you guys have a good holiday? Uh, yeah, I got another bit. I actually thought of a worse gift than a dollar store gift card. My mom gave me shaving cream for Christmas, and it's not that we're poor. I've accepted that part. She gave me the ultra sensitive kind. It's like, what kind of pussy do you think I am? You know. Fuck that aloe and shit, you know, give me, I'm a man, goddammit, I'm gonna shave with a tuna can lid and peanut butter, alright? <laughs> Fuck aftershave, give me some Tabasco sauce, goddammit. Uh, uh, <laughs> brutal. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, that's a joke. <laughs> that's, that, that, that's part of the joke, I didn't know part of that, none of that happened. Except that, that she did give me shaving cream, because we're poor as hell. My mom... <laughs> My mom is an extremely, she's, she's a wonderful lady, but she's very negative. She's like, uh, 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 she's like one of those magic eight balls, but the one that only ever says no, and that's all she does. She, I, she's paranoid too, like I lost my bank card recently, and she said, well, you know, and, and nothing happened, I didn't get my identity stolen. I had nothing bad happen, but I had it canceled, and I, can't, I told her, because I found it in my love box after I got home, and she said, well, you should still destroy it. All right, I'll just cut it in two. And then, you, and like, uh, well, you should probably throw it away, too. Well, should I melt it down? And she's like, no, throw the two pieces away separately so no one else can get a hold of them. 
What, what do they do? Have some a golden amulet or some shit? Like, is the eye of the universe gonna open and Skeletor control the world if he gets hold of my shitty bank card? I mean, think about it. Let me tell you, see, if there's a guy who's resourceful enough to go to two different places and glue my fucking bank card back together, he can have the 20 bucks, all right? So that's all. Not a big deal. I mean, I don't spend a lot of money. I did get my family gifts. I went to uh, Best Buy to go shopping uh, on, for the holidays. I went to, uh, and here's how much of an idiot I can be. I was shopping on Black Friday, the Wednesday before Black Friday. Love it. Yeah, you love it? Love it. Love what? Black Friday or Best Buy? Black Friday. Oh, okay, cool. You don't look like you celebrate Kwanzaa, but uh, <laughs> I, uh, I, did you buy any video games? Did you do that? When you're out there? No. Nah, no, big, big video game player. You guys, uh, you guys look like a very diverse audience of white people. Um, <laughs> white people all ages, shapes, and sizes. Look how I said white people. One guy goes, yeah! I'm like, what? I can't do it. I got, hey, hey! <laughs> Easy, easy. It was a bald guy, too, so I don't know. It wasn't him. Too far? Too far? All right, all right. Um, but do we have? Do we have? We got some younger people here too. That's cool. Do we have video game fans? Woo! Woo! All right, one lady. <laughs> what the hell are you doing out of the house? <laughs> oh, getting drunk. All right. I didn't know that you guys drank anything other than Mountain Dew. You know. <laughs> Next box live. What do you guys? What? Uh, what's your favorite video game? Halo, okay, like you like the shoot 'em up type of games? Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, alright. <laughs> Do you like Call of Duty? Not so much. Not so much? Huh? I don't like Call of Duty either. Some people are really into Call of Duty, they're like, ooh, I'm like, yeah, yeah, fight for your country from the safety of your couch. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys do you guys think that video games have gotten too violent for little kids though? No. It's like, no, you're in Michigan, pussy! <laughs> you deer hunt! <laughs> Rap on their hands when they're old enough to walk. <laughs> yeah, I think video games are too violent for kids because they send kids a bad message. Because when you shoot somebody, their body doesn't flicker and disappear. You got to get rid of it. Yeah, like I said, I'm from Detroit. Ask Kwame Kilpatrick. That shit will follow you. Yeah. yeah. And now, yeah, you got to digit. And then, now video, it's like action movies, though. They have a rating system now, so they have them for grown-ups. And now the video games are for grown-ups. They have video games with sex in them. Have you seen that? that they have a Grand Theft Auto game where you can unlock a sex scene and to advance to the next level, you have to fill this pleasure meter up all the way. And that's going to send a bad message to kids, too, when they're older, when they're with a woman for the first time, when they're like 18 or 19 or 28. And they're going to be like, how? Oh. 28. <laughs> How am I supposed to please this woman? And then they think back to the video game and they're like, Oh yeah, smash the buttons as hard as possible! <laughs> Slow then fast. It doesn't work, take it out, blow on them, put them back in. <laughs> oh my God. I'm single and uh, I don't do that. Um, I'm trying to start a fire down there. I'm not a good. I'm not great in bed though. Uh, I can't find the G spot because uh, I don't have OnStar. I don't. <laughs> You get lost down there, you don't have a GPS and you can't call a buddy for help, you know? Unless you I'm lost. It. Loop it up and punch it. What? <laughs> um, I, 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 I mean, I've been in a relationship for a while. I'm, I'm not married. Do we have any married people in the crowd today? Yeah. I went to a wedding this summer. It was set up in a very unusual way because the bride's family and the groom's family were on the opposite sides, but they were facing each other like a football game. Yeah. <laughs> Only difference is it's a wedding, so there's not going to be a winner. But, uh... <laughs> oh, man. 
It was a friend of mine from high school, and he was marrying his high school sweetheart. You know people who have done that? It's like, I, it's like he, I asked him, you know, oh, you, you, why are you getting married? He said, well, I knew I wanted to be with her when I was in high school. And I'm like, I knew I wanted to be Stone Cold Steve Austin when I was in high school. <laughs>